Welcome to Midweek. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, we have the Director of the Defense Media Activity. We'll check in with MWR, and there are just a few days left in this year's Army Emergency Relief Campaign. These stories and more, but first, Fort Meade held its annual Asian Pacific Heritage Month observance on Thursday at the McGill Training Center. So we're going to say aloha to you. Say aloha back to us. Aloha! 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 Thank you. Dancers from D.C. Luau Entertainment started the event with a warm welcome. Guest speaker, head football coach at the U.S. Naval Academy, Ken Numatololo, was born in American Samoa and grew up in Hawaii, a place that brings people and cultures from across the Pacific together in one place. But the thing that I learned there is when you're in Hawaii, you grow to love your culture, but you grow to love being American. And that's what I grew up. I, I used to pass by the Pearl Harbor uh, Memorial every day, and I had no clue what it stood for. I had no clue what it stood for. I thought it was a nice white you know, structure in the water there. And as I got older and started to appreciate what that stood for and the memorial that that stood for, it gave me a greater appreciation to be American and who I was. I used to pass by as a young man to go play basketball in Fort Island on a ferry and just looked at it and I thought it was a cool place to go. But in 2010, I was able to take my team back there. And it was probably one of the greatest experiences that I've had as a football coach to gather my team together. Again, I'm just a civilian, so I turned it over uh, to my captain, Marine captain who's in charge of our team from a military standpoint. And they did some things from a military protocol. Um, it just made me proud, again, to be an American. Coach Numa Tololo, Navy's head coach since 2007, has enjoyed unprecedented success. He's just the second Navy coach to lead his team to a winning record in his first three seasons, and his 32 wins are the most in school history in his first four years. And the mission that we have is to prepare our young men to serve our country. And right now we're, we're a nation at war and we're a nation at conflict. And so even though there's stuff that we're trying to do to help them to learn how to tackle and how to block and run co uh, cover three and the cover two and where, how deep the safety gets and to run the zone uh, and, and to run a, a curl in the outs, in the big scheme of things, those don't really matter. And what we're trying to teach from an overall standpoint uh, is just to make sure that there are truly some life lessons that I believe that football and sports is a great laboratory for life. In other news, the last round of base realignment was highlighted by three major construction projects. The last of the three, the Defense Media Activity, officially opened for business almost a year ago. But for much of the time since then, they've been without a leader. DMA's new director is Ray Shepard, a retired Air Force colonel with nearly 30 years of experience as a commander and military public affairs officer. But even with all that experience, consolidating all the services and the DOD's media operations into one organization is a huge task. I think when they were looking at being able to do some consolidation, this was a perfect organization to consolidate. You know, everyone needs internal communications and now we have an operation that literally had all the different services doing exactly the same thing. This is a great opportunity for them to be able to put them all together and to use those assets to help each other. And that's the creation of DMA. They took Army Broadcasting, they took uh, Army uh, Public Affairs that was doing the internal communications, they took all their websites, all those things that you look at in terms of photography, all those things are all in one building. And although the goal is to streamline operations, Shepard says that DMA is flexible. Now the individual services have it from a production standpoint. They take care of their magazines, their, their websites, as well as their broadcast operations. All that's done with one location here. We have centralized production, but at the same time we have individual messages we deliver. The Army has their services, the Air Force does theirs, and the Marines and Navy is like as well. Although the DMA headquarters is new, the agency has been represented on Fort Meade for years through the Defense Information School, or DINFOS. The garrison has created an atmosphere that I would say is very, very family-oriented. And I think, and I say family not just from the, the, the normal unit you would look at, but the military family as a whole. And as I find with all the other folks who are on the installation as we deal with them, there's a lot of cooperation that's going on here. There's a lot of connectivity that happens as a result of us all being together. So I think that, uh, you know, credit to the, to the garrison for having created that. Finally, on this edition, the annual Army Emergency Relief Campaign is winding down. As of May 3rd, Fort Meade has reached 91% of its annual goal, with contributions reaching $81,175. This year's campaign ends on May 15th. And that's Meade Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Meade Week.